So should I say take like, one? Right. <laughs> take one. Check. 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 And three. <laughs> one. Good morning, everybody. When do you need to push that up just a little bit more? Right there. Okay. All right. Good morning. We are going to be talking about wood today. My name is Toby, and I work with all different kinds of wood: driftwood, found wood, lost wood, all kinds of wood. Anyways, this morning I picked a small piece of wood to work with, and um, it's been laying around. I actually found it in the riverbed. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is wash it off. So I'm going to go over here and spray it off with the hose, and we're going to try to wash all the sand and all the nastiness out of it. Follow me over here. And I generally like to use the jet setting. Right there. Um, I generally like to use the jet setting on the hose just because it works the best and kind of gets all the stuff out. So here we go. you have to do it several times so generally what I like to do is just let it sit for a little while dry out in the Sun and then come back to it hit it with the hose and then um, start working with sandpaper and different types of brushes so we'll be talking about so we'll be talking about the different kinds of brushes and the different types of sandpaper that you can use to get started so we'll talk about that in our next seg segment all right three two one <laughs> All right, you guys, so this is dried just a little bit. Um, today I'm going to leave it just slightly wet um, just because some of the debris down in there. So um, generally what I like to do is I use a lot of different brushes to start with, uh, small, tiny ones like these. Um, I generally try to go to Harbor Freight, the dollar store, anywhere like that. You can pick these up because you go through them very quickly. Um, because it's a smaller piece, I'm going to start with this medium one. And I generally like to put it down on my leg. You have to be careful sometimes so you don't, when you're wearing shorts. And then you want to also check for the way the direction of the wood grain is going. Um, you don't want to go against it too much because it takes away from the natural fibers and everything that you can see in the wood. So see how this is a little bit wet, but it's coming out. I don't know if you guys can see, I'll kind of show it a little bit closer to you like right in here so that's the stuff that I'm digging out with this how long does it take you to do that um depending on the piece and how much of the bark and stuff that I want to remove um this can take Sometimes a lot in a long time. Um, it just depends on how detailed you want to be, but if you have good brushes, it, um, you'll be able to go through it a lot quicker. And there's no right or wrong way to do this, you guys. It's just, you just got to get in there. Um, and again, depending on the vision of the piece of wood, you know, you can do anything you want. Um, I think, if you guys can see, right in here, see the little hole? Peek-a-boo! Um, that little hole, I think I actually might turn this into a hanging piece, or it, it could be incorporated into two pieces, possibly. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see. The other good part about this is you gotta get a good workout in, you know? Get a good workout. And me and my friends don't like to work out too much, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't run unless I'm being chased. <laughs> my friend Wendy says she doesn't run unless she's being chased. And you'll be seeing Wendy here real soon. She's going to be doing some awesome recipes and different cooking things, as well as Lonnie. She's got some awesome craft things you guys are going to have to check out on our YouTube page. On, 
Um, some of the smaller pieces that are soft, um, you guys have to be careful not to break the pieces off. I've done that several times um, in my haste to, you know, bang the wood out. That probably sounded a little inappropriate, but <laughs> if you're anything like me, my friends, we are slightly inappropriate all the time. Uh, so, if you'd like to be slightly inappropriate like us, please hang out with us all the time. <laughs> And I guess I should have told you guys that um, safety glasses are probably a good idea. However, I'm a rebel and I'm not wearing any today, so just note to self that um, also gloves, super importante, because these things are super sharp and if they poke you, they don't feel good and you'll bleed all over everything. Okay, I think I'm getting it down to a pretty good stage now where I'm probably gonna go ahead and spray it off with the hose one more time. Um, I don't need to show you guys that, you know how to use a hose, I think. But uh, I would recommend after the second rinse off, you leave it out in the sun and let it really dry. And then um, we'll start with some sandpaper. So we'll show you guys that in the next por portion of our sanding segment. Hey everybody, uh, so this is pretty dry now. Um, thanks for coming back and watching. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit with the brush and some sandpaper. Um, I just bought some of this. It's, um, I get these wherever I can find them cheaply. There's all kinds. I start with obviously the harder grit. This is 50 grit, but today I'm gonna start with um, 150 just cause this part right here, I don't know if you can see here, I'll show you guys. See all this right in here? That's pretty bare already, so I'm just gonna get down in there. So when do you feel, just move that camera down just a little bit towards the wood. There you go. And I like to roll it. Comes in big sheets like this, okay? I like to fold it in half and then roll it up like this to get down in these crevices really good. Found that works pretty good. There's a tough little spot right down in here that we're gonna get so you can sand and then get that little brush in there. <laughs> That's good. Perfect. And then back with the sandpaper. pretty good there. I also use a wonderful thing called an air compressor from time to time <laughs> when these get gunked up. So if you guys are able to get an air compressor that would be awesome. You don't need anything major, but something's better than nothing. And or a can of air. Right, and something that you might also have laying around at your house is like a blower, like a leaf blower. Those work amazingly well. something stuck in there so remember to go back with your handy dandy teeth getters <laughs> and dig it out <clears throat> so sometimes you can't get it all out when you spray it with the water so tools are really important
As you guys can see right here, this little piece is kind of starting to break off. For me, it's okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and break it, but for some of you, it might not be. Remember, you guys can do whatever you want with your piece of wood. Being creative is in the eye of the beholder, I guess. See, that, to me, that looks a lot better. It cleaned it up a little bit. I'm gonna come back with my sandpaper again. Actually, let me set it up here so you can see it a little bit better. Because who doesn't love wood jokes, right, people? <laughs> <laughs> Long wood, hard wood, short wood. <laughs> Nobody likes limp wood though. Plus it's hard to sand. So don't do that. Okay, so let's check this thing out. See how cool it looks right now. We haven't even gotten all of that. There. Now that we're done sanding and using the steel wool, I'm going to move on and um, now we are going to seal the wood a little bit. Um, I'm going to be using this teak oil. Um, it'll probably take one to two coats. I like this because it actually penetrates the wood. Um, it doesn't sit on top of the wood. So it really gets down deep into the grooves and you can really see all the natural uh, wood fibers and all of that in here. So it's pretty neat. So let's check out this piece is finished got it nice and smooth the steel wool works really well with this so yeah we're gonna get to doing this so shake this really well safety glasses gloves I'm gonna use a uh, one inch little paintbrush that I got at the dollar store and then I have another little small craft brush for getting down in the, the grooves. So I'm gonna pour some in a little glass container. And glass containers work the best because you can also dump it back out into this when you're done. little amount on there and then uh, just start going. And don't forget that I blew this off really well with a uh, air compressor um, to get all the sand uh, sawdust out. Good morning, everybody. Um, so this is the finished product of uh, the wood that we've been working on. 
Um, I put the last coat on last night and this is what it turned out to look like this morning. Now for me, my eye, um, there's a couple spots, I'm not sure if you can see, right in through here, um, where it's really shiny. So I unfortunately put a little bit too much of the teak oil. So I might go ahead and maybe lightly sand this down again to get it to, um, you know, more raw wood. And then I might go ahead and put just maybe another coat on it just to see how it looks. And you can repeat the process with sandpaper and um, the steel wool if you want. If you like the way it looks, it looks pretty cool, I think. Um, and as you can see, there's other little spots that have a little more shimmer. Um, and that's also because it's not completely dry. Um, because again, it soaks down into the wood and it helps harden it and um, protect it. So anyways, if you guys will uh, continue to bear with me throughout my wood projects, um, uh, I would really appreciate it. I'm kind of struggling here. And um, anyway, so I'll get better with the video um, so you guys can get more detail. And so, you know, if you guys have any nice comments or suggestions, that would be awesome. I'd love to hear from you. Um, anyways, thank you and have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you in my next wood project. All right, have a great day. Make it a gorgeous one.